I didn't want to go through. And you know what? They, I kind of slipped through the cracks and, and I got by and I really didn't give God the credit. And I'll get around that situation again. And the Holy Spirit convicts me and brings that back to remembrance. Thank God for the Holy Spirit that renews a thought or a lesson to us so we don't go down that wrong road again. I think how neat it is when he confirms old things in my life. He'll get me in a situation where there's a bunch of drunks or a bunch of cussing or something. And I'm thinking, oh God, that was me. And he'll let me see and watch that and be thankful that he's delivered me and brought me out of that. It's cool to have a God that loves us so much that will bring back to remembrance where we came from. He shows me the way, the truth, and the light. The Holy Spirit wants to show me Jesus, the way, the truth, and the light. And he shows us every day that we can get through the storm. He's not going to take us out, but there's a way through. There's a power that without him, we can't make. The world can't handle the Holy Spirit, Jesus says in verse 17. The world can't handle it. They won't believe in what they don't see. And I was thinking of Thomas. We, we, we talked about him last week. Jesus, just show me your wounds, and I'll believe. And I still say that he just had been around the other 11 so long and they were a bunch of goofballs. He had to say it for himself to believe. I don't call him a doubter. I just call him wanting to see the proof so he can grow in his faith. But we do. People filled with the Spirit look like they're crazy. Scripture even says uh, that bunch over there are drunk. What's up with that? <laughs> You and I are weirdos to the world. I don't get them guys. If that jerk would go work, they wouldn't have to be giving him or her money right now. Well, they don't look at the situation, the circumstance they're in, or what got them there. They don't know that the righteous will never be found begging for bread. They don't know the promises of God. And we look stupid. And I remember reading about tithing, thinking, oh yeah, do you want me to give away so I can get more, get blessed? Yeah, that's me. You want me to go to that church over there? That thing's filled with a ton of hypocrites. But Jesus knows that he wants to heal them. That's the place they can get healing and peace and love and mercy and grace. Because the world out there won't give it to them. They don't know how. The Holy Spirit lives with us and in us, he said. And we've talked so many times about the indwelling. And I always relate it to baptism and going under the water. If we dunk you under the water long enough, you would eventually... Quit breathing and gasp, and you would be filled with water. And it would be around you. It would be in you. You would be completely immersed in it. And that's what the Holy Spirit, God the Father, and Jesus does to us, is completely immerse us with the Spirit. We are filled to the brim. And that's why Paul teaches so many places in Scripture that we can't sin anymore. We should not be sinning anymore. We're filled with the Spirit. We have the capability in us not to do that. But oh, our human nature takes us right back there. It's the truth that sets us free, and we have to accept the truth, or we don't get set free. It's that simple. Jesus says, I am the way the truth and the life. We have to confess our sin for the truth to work. Confession 
it is major. <coughs> we had a testimony Thursday night about a person who was actually sick, and they confessed their sin and instantly got healed of it. It's powerful. When we confess our sin, the truth will step up and work in our life and renew us, change us, restore us. How powerful that is. The world can't handle the Holy Spirit. It just can't. The world doesn't have Him. And I say so many times, you can't give away what you don't have. If I ask Miss Lillian to give Joey a cup of coffee, she can't do it. She don't have coffee in her hand. If you don't have the love of Jesus in you, there's no way she can give Joey the love of Jesus. Now, she can smother him with the love of Jesus. She's filled with that. Think about it. You can't give away what you don't have. They don't see him. They don't see. The world does not see one sign of the Holy Spirit. They, they couldn't recognize him at all. They don't know him. They've never been connected to the source. It's like putting a brand new battery in your car and never hooking the jump or the battery cables back up. It ain't going to start. If we're not hooked to the source, we don't have the power to do. We're just like the world. We're disconnected. Jesus tells the disciples, but you know him. He said, the world doesn't know me, but you do. Do you know Jesus today, or do you just know about him? Because there's a major, a big difference. You have to know who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is, or you only know about him. I know about the battery in a car, but if I don't know to hook the cables back up to it, I don't know anything about the source, the power of that car. Jesus tells the disciples, but you know him. We are required to know. The world doesn't know him, but we do. We have to be the example. We have to be the tool that God can use to draw the world in and know Jesus and experience the Holy Spirit. Matthew 4, 1. Jesus was led by the Spirit to be tempted, the Scripture says. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit led Jesus to the desert so he could be tempted. And how did God get through that? What was these words? He kept telling Satan, defense the power is the Holy Spirit, God the Father Almighty. The Holy Spirit causes us to obey. Um, when, I, when I disobey the Lord, there's a conviction comes over me and think, why did you do that? And it causes me to have to apologize, to have to confess my sin. It causes me to have to do a whole lot of things. The Holy Spirit should convict us of our sin. The Holy Spirit causes us to love Jesus more than ever. God is love. Oh, yeah, yeah. God's love, all right. He let my son die two weeks ago, and you're telling me God's love? That's a tough one. I just found out I got cancer, and you think God the Father loved me? Holy Spirit in us, Jesus indwelling us in the Holy Spirit, we know that our last breath on this earth is our first breath in heaven, and we can have peace through that storm, and know that if he takes us home tomorrow, our first breath is in heaven, our new breath. The Holy Spirit causes us to desire more of Christ. I remember getting saved, and man, I was I a troublemaker. I didn't even want to go to work. Man, I couldn't let this thing down. I had to study. I had to talk about it. Uh, Michelle even brought it up last night while we were eating dinner. That's all we talk about is church. <laughs> Sorry, your dad is pastor. And she loved Jesus. 
that she didn't mean anything bad by it, but it's easy for me to talk about the Father all the time. <coughs> Jesus. The Holy Spirit causes a desire for more of Christ. And if your desire is for more stuff than it is for the love of the Lord, then you need to rearrange like the poem I read you last week, the dash. The Holy Spirit draws people to God. You know there's nothing we can do to come to the Lord on our own. He has to draw us. He has to pull us in. And he uses the Holy Spirit to do that. And Jesus says, before long, the world won't see me, but you'll see me. I live, you'll live. And the reason we're going to live is because Jesus is going to die on that cross and shed his blood to cleanse us white as snow. And we're going to live. At this point in time, we're dead without Jesus' blood being shed. The supernatural is in you, the spirit of truth, not man's word. If you're counting on man, you're going to get let down. If your expectations, your hope, your emotions are seated on Jesus or on, on yourself or on another man or a woman, you're done. The only true, the only absolute truth we have is Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us and teaching us. The Counselor will remind you of all I have said. There are so many times I'll be in Walmart or someplace or even here at church and somebody will ask me a question and the Holy Spirit will remind me about the scripture. How cool is it? That he'll bring just the right word at the right time to touch the right heart in a mighty way. When we're reminded, conviction sets in and when we're reminded, peace sets in. Set in. And there are a whole lot of us in this room this morning that are really in turmoil. We're on a rough, rocky road, and the rides get pretty bumpy. There's supposed to be peace in your life. Even in the storm, there can be peace. Because you know that if you die or your breath is taken away, you're, you're going to end up in heaven where there's no more sickness, sadness, sorrow. There can be peace, and it can only come from the Holy Spirit. He says, peace I leave you, peace I give to you. I don't give as the world gives. How many know that the world uh, really isn't capable of giving us much peace today? There's a lot of turmoil, a lot of uh, instability. The world has nothing to offer you and I, but we've got a whole lot to offer them. The world's full of strife, turmoil, uncertainty, discontentment, fear. And Jesus says, I give you my peace. And I was thinking who my worst enemy is, and the thought came to my mind right away, Satan, and then I rethought it, and I thought, no, it's me. I'm my own worst enemy. I can make some bad, bad choices really quick. Well, the devil made me do it. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. The devil didn't make Jesus do anything in the desert when he was being tested. He said it's written. Satan, you jerk, I don't have to do that. I'm an overcomer. I'm a child. I'm adopted. I'm not an orphan. Jesus loves me. And I don't have to go down that road. Our worst enemy is me. The Holy Spirit's available 24-7 all the time. Our focus has to be on Jesus, the head of everything. Jesus has to be the head of our church, our home, our family, and our businesses, our workplaces. And if he isn't, expect trouble. I know it's easy. I want to be my own boss. The 
don't work. I did that and lost six hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Don't work. And the Holy Spirit can be as close or distant as we choose. Jesus says, I'm sending him to be by your side. And we can distance ourselves to where the Holy Spirit will just leave us alone. He's not pushy, bossy, or conniving. He won't, he won't do anything. <coughs> he doesn't make us because we have choice, our free will, and he won't violate it. Spirit-filled living will always be contrary to the worldview. So that's why we always get opposition. We're always bucking the storm, pushing and shoving and trying to get our way through as Christians. A.W. Tozer asked the question one time, is there anything bigger in your life than your desire to be a spirit-filled Christian? And he paused and let people think about it. And then he said, you're not as good a man as you think you want to be. You're as good a man as you want to be. <coughs> That's powerful if you think about it. You're not as good a man as you think you want to be. You're only as good a man as you want to be. People get to the place that they don't want to work any harder, any longer, anymore and then quit. You're as good a man as you want to be. We have to be good. And by good, I don't mean good people make it to heaven, because we all know that they ain't anybody good enough to make it to heaven on their own without Jesus. Spirit-filled living costs us Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. You love Jesus if you obey me. And if we obey Jesus, then the power of the Holy Spirit is with us. And then he tells them, Satan's coming. I won't be with you much longer. He's basically telling them, Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy and he's going to turn even the disciples against me, and they're going to yell, crucify him. Satan's coming. Satan's going to get things riled up. He's going to cause people that think they love Jesus to turn against him. The power is there through the Holy Spirit to do whatever needs to be done. Satan riles up, and Jesus gives peace. Jesus leaves and the Holy Spirit goes to work. I think it's really cool. Jesus is going to be with the Father and it opens the door up for the Holy Spirit to come and indwell us. And now we don't have to wait on the Jesus to be following. We have a comforter, the teacher, the Holy Spirit living in us, walking with us so we know the way, the truth, and the life. Is there anybody in here this morning that your life's really riled up and you need the peace of Jesus? If you do, I want you to come up here this morning. I'm going to pray for you as we close. Nobody needs to know why you're riled up or how you got riled or anything else.
there is a peace that passes understanding, and it can only come from God Almighty. Scripture says all things were created by God and for God, and it's in Him that they all hold together. You know, even monkey stirred up water gets settles and cleans eventually, but it takes time. You stir the pot, and boy, it takes a while for the needles to settle back to the bottom. But they'll settle. This, too, whatever you have riled in your life right now will settle. And the Holy Spirit will, will bring it back to your memory, and you'll look back at it, and it'll seem so small. But right now, it's riled up, and it's tough, ain't it? If it wasn't, you wouldn't be up here right now. I want you to know, every one of you, that the Holy Spirit lives in you. And that peace that you need, that hole that God created, He will fill through the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray right now for your situation. If there's anything in your life right now that you need to confess to Jesus, say, I'm sorry, Father, I, I've sinned against thee. I want you to do it right now to yourself. You don't have to do it out loud. You know only you know and only you need to know because God already knows. He just wants you to open up. I don't want our prayers to be hindered. If you've got something holding you down, Satan's riled up something and you bet and brought into it, release it. Ask God to forgive you right now. He'll forget it as far as the east is. Father, I pray that everybody up here at this altar, that you would settle your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of peace, the Spirit of truth down onto them. And Lord, if they've been filled with a lie, if they're convicted about something that they've done that they shouldn't have done, if they're not where they need to be, if uh, you're not their first love and they're asking you to come back in, walk beside them. Lord, you said you sent the Holy Spirit to walk beside them. And if they haven't asked him into their heart, if they've gotten lukewarm, if they've faded and become weak, I'm asking you to indwell them and fill them stronger with the Holy Spirit than they've ever been filled before so they can fan the flame and become stronger and more uh, viable and more usable for your glory and your honor. Lord, it's all about you. It's not about a single person up here. It's all about you. And wherever they're at right now in their life, Lord Jesus, it's causing a hindrance for them to serve you and love you and do for you like they need to do. Lord, it could be a job. It could be whatever you know and you love them they are your friends so Lord I'm asking you to touch them right where they're at refresh them, renew them restore them lift the weight off of them that causes them to be burdened down Lord uh, cause them to yoke up with you so they're burdened and Lord, if one of them has totally lost hope and they're weak, pick them up and carry them until they're strong enough and healed enough to get back on their feet. Lord, I pray a blessing over this church, over our families, over our marriages, over our finances, that you would heal us in the name of Jesus and set us free by the Spirit of the truth. Thank you, Lord, that they were aware they had the strength, the courage to come up here and reach their withered hand out for you to heal. And Lord, help each one of them as they leave here to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for their healing, their deliverance, their renewal, their restoration that they received while they've been here. 
Lord, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our Maker, Creator, our Healer, our Comforter, our Peace. And Lord, we know you're going to give them what they've asked for, because anything they ask in your name will be given. And it's done through your Son's name. Go in peace. I don't know what you laid down here, what you set down here, but don't pick that sucker up. Leave it lay here. Cast your cares on the Lord. Don't reel them back in. Pull them back in and start all over. Leave your mess right here, whatever it was, and walk away. Old things have passed away, and all things have become brand new to you, okay? Do you believe it? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. I know it's a holiday, and there are things you'd rather be doing, but uh, you know what? God is really going to bless you today for keeping him first and for coming and worshiping him. Uh, all you visitors that are new today, we've got a, a gift mug for you, so we don't want you leaving without one. We want to bless you with a, a gift. Thank you for coming. Thank you for loving Jesus. Do I have a couple of hands? If you are on the worship teams, I would love to meet you in the back by the couches right before you leave. I'm supposed to start with this, so we'll finish with it. There's a ramp that we need to build really bad Tuesday afternoon. Uh, the Kiwanis, a lot of you know, have picked up the, the cost of our ramp, the materials, which is a blessing. It's five to $800 every time we do one, and they're paying the bill, but guess what? But the Kiwanis need a ramp. So we need to build that ramp for them. His wife has got both her valves are leaking in her heart. Uh, they're close to 80 years old, and they've got to go to Cleveland Clinic Wednesday morning at 7.30. And I hated asking anybody with Monday being a holiday, so let's hit it Tuesday afternoon. It's straight shot. We ought to be able to knock it out really quick. But I need you to come and help. We're going to start at 2, and those of you that can come uh, from 2 on, just drift in when you can. I'm not asking you to, to take off work or do anything, but drift in and help us do that for him. He walked out in the garage and said, Mike, see my wood shop? And the man is quite awesome. He's got every tool imaginable. He said, I can't use them anymore. And he said, the tools that I use to build the ramps, the bolts, the screws, and all the special stuff, I'm given destiny. I know he gave us easy five, six hundred dollars worth of tools. He wants to bless us. That's where his heart is. He said, I've watched you guys and gals work, and he said, you do awesome work. What's the location? Pardon? Location. It's uh, 240 Water Street. And for those of you that know where uh, Diamond and Riley Street is, where the Kinneville Middle School is, there's a street that jogs just a little bit to the south, and that's Water Street. And I think it's the third house on the right. And that rascal's about this far off the ground. So we'll, we're going to we'll make it this far, sweetheart. <laughs> Anybody that wants to go to Friend Fest, uh, that's the, or the music, Christian music uh, festival over at Anthony. I want you to see Dave afterwards. It's June 21st, 22nd. And uh, they, they need to make camping arrangements. Now, no su next Sunday, there's no service here. You come and ain't going to be anybody here. <coughs> We're going to be over to Alabama. And if you take 3 South to Road 8 and go toward Alabama, it's going to be the last thing on your right before you enter the city limits. It'll be on your right. Fence on the right. Right across the street. It's a no county saddle for right across the board. The fence on the left. <laughs> and June 9th, we're going to honor our graduates again. And that's the Sunday I'm going to give the, the message on marriage. And Melissa, June 29th, 
is going to have her women's Bible study. You're going to meet here, Melissa. You're going to meet here, and then you're going to Sacred Heart, right? Cool. And then you're going to have Dinah come, or 